G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and as always I'm joined by Flynn and today we've got some pretty cool topics. Uh, there was a big cyber breach in Australia, actually one of the most impactful of all time that just happened. Uh, we only really learned about it today to its full extent. Then there was a Disney hack as well which is really interesting. So uh, let's jump right into it Flynn. So what do we know about this uh, MediSecure breach? Yeah, so basically, we have covered the MediSecure breach as it happened. Uh, we knew that this was going to be a very large, large-scale breach based um, off of the information we had and also the nature of the announcement. Basically, the government had said, we know something's going on. As soon as the government releases something like that, you know it's going to be a bit of a shitstorm, for a lack of a better word. Uh, also, I believe we covered how Many Secure was going to go solvent uh, around the same time where that Wollongong Korea company was also um, going under. Yep. Uh, more information has now been released uh, fresh off the press, probably not by the time this is released, but uh, as me and Max are talking, so it's 12.9 million records have been, a uh, million Australians, sorry, have been compromised in this breach, which um, if anyone's not an Australian in our audience that's over 50 percent of the working population which is obviously extremely extremely uh bad it's pretty embarrassing that you know it seems the scale of these breaches just seems to keep increasing uh as far as i'm aware max correct me if i'm wrong but this is based off of healthcare providers so uh listeners basically keep an eye out on scams especially i would say um with your family uh, yeah. maybe you know the older older people in your family that may need sort of medical stuff um those scams are probably going to be coming through the door maybe not immediately but you know six months to a year and in the f probably near to far future those scams are probably going to become much more common yeah. so the type of information that has been lost with this breach from what the government and medisecures looked through their analysis has shown that it has been contact and health information relating to prescriptions so this is going to mean you know medicare numbers it's going to mean addresses it's going to mean phone numbers medical records potentially um and yeah lots more healthcare provider information as well as just prescription information so things relating to your um to your healthcare so if you're with you know nab sorry NIB or um or Medibank or you know those guys any any healthcare stuff is going to be um is potentially going to be lost which is yeah really not good and yeah it's actually it's more records lost than both Optus and also Medibank from last year or the year before so it's I think 2022. yeah yeah so more records lost than those guys and substantially more crucial information loss so it's probably one of the worst um yeah worst incidents of cyber security you know being impacted in australian history really and the fact that it's you know caused the company to be liquidated basically shows that you know it's not good it's really not good yeah it seems to be an annual event that we have the next it biggest does. worst breach in australian history yeah um once again you know we've said it before and it's no secret that once one industry starts to get targeted um that keeps being the case and you know being um medical companies the information they hold is so valuable that uh attackers aren't going to be going anywhere they're going to keep targeting these industries 100 percent. so moving on to the disney hack as well so what seems to have happened is someone was uh able to infiltrate um <laughs> into Disney's Slack channels, which if you don't know what Slack is, Slack is like Discord, it's like Teams, it's where you communicate with your um, fellow co-workers. And the developer Slack, which means the people who work on the code, all those guys, their Slack got pretty much completely, um, yeah, exfiltrated. So from I've heard rumors that it's been due to an insider, but those are just rumors at the moment. Um, and, you know, it's not good. The type of information that was taken was current projects um upcoming projects uh infrastructure architecture uh you know really uh confidential uh messages between i'm assuming quite high up managers and um yeah 12 so it was 
1.1 terabytes of data. So 1,100 gigabytes of data was stolen. And that is, when you're just talking about messages and projects and information, raw information, that is heaps. That is an absurd amount. So, you know, expect to see on Twitter, you know, some, some, some announcements or, uh, you know, uh, launches or leaks for, um, for upcoming Disney projects and what they had planned. Yeah. I, I think that the insider one might be a bit of a stretch because based off of 1.1 terabytes, as you said, we can assume that that's probably going to be someone pretty high up in the organization. Mm. You would hope if they're doing, you know, segregation properly, the, somebody, um, you know, they wouldn't have access to all these projects. Yeah. Uh, they would be sort of segregated into specific ones. Um, the nature of it being that high up with an organization as big as Disney makes me think it is someone who's probably fairly senior, yep. which makes me also think it's probably not an insider because of course executives and stuff would get um, disgruntled, but yep. it'd be pretty obvious who it would be <laughs> if you tried to do that, like they would, you'd get done immediately. Um, but who really knows at the moment, uh, very, very unfolding situation. Um, and we will update you. <laughs> It's fresh off the press, pretty much. Like this, the, both of those things were announced today as of recording, which is the 18th of July. Um, yeah, so just I, I think it, it, you know, these kind of things, especially Disney, it's something new where we haven't really seen that type of um, data X tool before. Uh, commit, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, going through the the teams service or the um the team's communication service and exfilling data through that direction that's something that is it sounds unique to me right it's not maybe it's just because it's slack but it's not something that um that is frequently sort of brought up usually the kind of stuff that's lost in an attack is um you know customer records not so much um like employee information yeah, it's hard to say. I, I would assume it's not too unique just because certain companies, especially when IP is your biggest, um, you know, asset, yeah. if you're losing, if you're losing your IP, um, that's a really, really big issue. And, uh, that people put their IP over messages, which probably isn't too wise. Uh, I'd, sometimes it's kind of unavoidable, yeah. but, um, depending on, you know, what's found out Disney could have been. Yeah, had some better practice, I suppose. But yeah, just to clarify, I I meant sort of yeah the um corporate data. I didn't mean uh, uh employee data because usually employee data is the is what makes up the bulk of information lost in data breaches. So yeah, like the corporate uh, information is what I meant there. Um, just reading up on this, so apparently it's being the it was carried out by a hacktivist group called Null Bulge which is a, a interesting name there. Um, and they, they've said that their cause was protecting artists' rights and ensuring fair compensation for their work. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm not, I don't know how true that is. I don't know really anything about, yeah. um, the, the artistry, the artist industry, um, and, and how that works, but it's probably going to be a pretty, pretty big talking subject, um, for a while, I'd say. Yeah. It's hard to say because, you know, hacktivists, especially in recent memory, you know, they often will claim things when it wasn't actually them. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it sounds like something that could be a legitimate reason to do hacktivism. Yeah. Um, a couple of years back, there was a big um, big push for artists and, um, and getting more revenue for artists working for big companies such as Disney. Um, there was, it was more sort of tailored towards directors and actors and stuff. Not that actors, you know, um, should really be uh, pushing for it too much. Not the mainline ones, at least, because they're they're getting pretty good salary. But uh, but yeah, I think more of like the production crews. There was big strikes there, uh, delaying a lot of movies coming out. From this data as well, um, just what has been said already is uh, revenue data relating to the Disneyland uh, parks. So Disneyland Paris specifically, they showed revenue data for that, and. The one of the big leaks, which is cool, uh, you can call it like a Cyber Minutes exclusive one, is uh, it seems like they were they were planning on putting in a new streaming feature that would recommend Disney content based on what viewers previously watched, which isn't like a 
you know, isn't like a huge um, thing to add. I feel like Netflix is already sort of. Yeah, I feel like that's already a thing. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's it's algorithm is a bit different. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.